Hello there, welcome back to Planet Zoo and uh, welcome to a new zoo today. Uh, don't panic, the other zoo series that I have on the channel will be continuing so um, don't worry about that. But I've had an idea for uh, another new zoo that I'd like to do. So uh, I'm going to start by just explaining to you uh, what I've already done in my other zoos briefly and why I feel like I want to do a new one. So uh, for any of you who have seen some of my other series, my very first one was called Green Valley Zoo. And that was just a sort of a test zoo for me, really. It was my first proper big zoo. It was just a, there wasn't a particular sort of uh, a theme to it. It was just, um, you know, taking the each individual animal and building the most interesting enclosure that I could. But the zoo itself didn't really... Uh, have a style or anything so that was that was sort of a practice uh, I then did Waverley Zoo and Waverley Zoo was a lot more detailed and it was uh, a realistic zoo so lots of backstage area um, lots of small details you know little gutters on the buildings and drain pipes and you know I, I don't know all, all sorts of little details that uh, that I hadn't done in Green Valley Zoo then I did Tiny Zoo, and Tiny Zoo was the the idea behind that was to create something small, compact, um, you know, very very detailed again, but very squashed together, and also uh, particularly with the pathing, uh, it wasn't realistic, it wasn't usable, so I couldn't really open the zoo. There's lots of bits in there where I was creating pathways that weren't usable, but they looked good. Um, so that was sort of my thinking with Tiny Zoo. Uh, and then my fourth zoo was a safari park. Um, that series is um, still very young. I've still got a lot to do in there. Um, as I record this, I think I've I've recorded maybe seven episodes of safari, uh, the, the safari park, and I think I've maybe published three of them, maybe only two. In, no, no, I think it's three by now. Um, so still a way to go on that. So this now is Opal Zoo. And uh, I will explain the reasoning behind the name in a minute. <clears throat> so let me show you my, my, my basic thinking first, is that I want to create a very heavily themed zoo, which is, again, it's something I've not done before. So what I've done down here, as you can see, I've made a list here of the different sort of themes that I think I could make look good. So when I say themes, it's not just the animals, but it's the whole area. So the, the, um, the trees, the, the shrubs, the rocks, uh, and obviously all of the details, all the decorations, um, every, everything I put down basically is going to be styled to suit each of these six uh, zones within the zoo. Uh, and then I've I've gone through and I've I've pulled out all the interesting animals that I think are relevant to each of the areas. And so as you can see, obviously Australia has only really got three uh, three animals in the game that are specifically Australian. Uh, you got four here from South America, you got five from the Arctic, five aquatic, five Africa, and then all of these here are Asia. Now this is the one I'm really going to be getting stuck into. I'm really excited about this because a lot of these are new animals from the latest expansion packs. Um, certainly these top four, uh, the Malayan tapir, the sun bear, the proboscis monkey, they're all, they're all new animals. I haven't done any, even the older ones in here, the giant pandas, the Komodo dragons, I've not really played around with them much at all. So I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into these. Uh, African uh, penguin, uh, fennec fox and meerkat, uh, ma excuse me, meerkat are three new ones from the latest pack. Um, I've done all of the aquatic before. I haven't really played around with these arctic ones. So I've not done arctic wolves, polar bears, reindeers or snow leopards. Or in fact timber wolves I don't think. So in fact I think they're all new for me. All of these Australian ones are new for me. Um, the South American ones I have done before, so um, that isn't new, but I'm looking forward to doing a little South America area. So that's my thinking. It's not going to be a huge park. Um, I only want it to take up sort of this. Hang on, let me move the screen. Roughly what you can see on the screen there is sort of the size of the park. Um, the main reason for that is if these series go on for too long, um, not only does my computer struggle to keep up uh, because it's uh, it's not the most powerful computer and by the time you start filling this whole map um, it can get very laggy 
and so with so with my other parks i've ended up having to remove the animals from the park just to um, prevent some of the lag which is very annoying um, so I want to keep it small but also I feel like because I want to do a lot of detailing if it's too spread out you really struggle with the um, with the theming I think uh, so that's the idea is that if I keep it relatively small then the theming can be quite detailed because um, obviously when you're, when you're building a large area like this you the temptation is to do a lot of copying and pasting with the landscape and with rock work and stuff like that and i don't really want to do that i want to try and and keep the keep the uh, the uniqueness going so there we go so that's my plan i hope you like the sound of it i'm certainly looking forward to getting stuck in i decided i'm going to start with australia because it is going to be the smallest of the zones so that will help me kind of get into the flow and work out exactly how i'm going to do it and, uh, and what what i'm what i'm able to do really uh, so australia is going to be first so i'm going to crack on with that now and that's going to be off to the right here somewhere i think um so i'm going to go away now and get cracking and uh, i'll be right back right well what i've decided to do first is to create an entrance to my australia area and this is what i've come up with so far still still more to do but um it's coming along quite nicely i found this lovely map um, of australia which i really like so that has to go up on a nice bit of stone here with one of these little covers over the top and i wanted to create some kind of a sign over here uh, obviously it's not quite finished because i've still got some floating pieces but you get the idea um so I wanted to um, to use sort of a, a wooden texture, and, and first I just used the light coloured boards. But then when I when I got back here, you couldn't see them, so I've just gone over the top and created it as a double layer using these darker planks. And I think that looks really nice with these nice iron sheets randomly put behind. Um, and then I've used these these cool surfboard covers over the top to create a little shelter. I thought that looked kind of nice. And then just off to the side. Um, you've, got, you've got one of these lovely mechanical kangaroos. They just look fantastic, don't they? So daft, but uh, I, I absolutely adore that. So that has to be in here with a little fence with some of these little signs just suggesting what animals you might see inside. Um, I'm not actually going to have... Uh, what is this one? A ca cas I'm not never sure how to say it. A cassowary? I don't think that's how you pronounce that, but <laughs> it might be. But I'm not actually going to have them in the park anyway. I don't think although actually i might do because I've, I've got a bit of an idea of the the enclosures i'm doing so actually i might be able to mingle that in with with some of the other ones so who knows we'll see um and then i like the the, the, the idea of australian sort of the outback where things are left and abandoned and fall apart that's why i put these little iron sheets on the floor here um just kind of suggesting that um you know it's sort of dilapidated and things are falling apart um so that's uh, that's where i'm up to so far so there we go pretty happy with that and, and the rock work here is all random just lots of um lots of rocks all put together until i think it looks half decent basically um, so i'm going to have a lot of fun i think with these rocks it's it's not not something i've put a lot of effort into in the past is is creating sort of these unique rock structures um i've always been a bit too impatient to do it in the past but uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna work more on that this time to try and really uh, make it look good so there we go so that's where i'm up to so far so I've, I've got a little bit work still to do on this entrance and then i'll be moving inside and the first uh habitat that i'm going to be doing uh, will be for koalas because everyone loves a koala bear don't they so let me uh let me go away and crack on with some more right well just briefly what i've done here you can see i've just marked out the start of my koala enclosure so it's going to be an island essentially back here um, with water all around it um, but what I've just done I just want to show you my thinking here so I've mapped out the rough sort of areas so you've got Australia Africa Asia is the big one so that's going to come right around the back uh, aquatic here South America here and then Arctic over here uh, so I just wanted to show you that because um, I want you to, to have a rough idea of how big the park's going to be. So that's that's my thinking anyway. Uh, as far as this goes, um, obviously I have still got more adjustments that I want to make on this. Um, lots of more detailing around the front here, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to, sh to, to, to quickly show you the, uh, the layout. Uh, and now I'm going to go and uh, crack on with my uh, koala island. 
got a few ideas for this not sure if it's going to work I might have to make some adjustments along the way um, but uh, yeah let me uh, let me go away and do some more work <clears throat> excuse me and I'll be right back right well I decided to give you a little update here because I just want to show you um, exactly how not to do an island for koalas in as much as I, this, I had this idea and I hate this this is terrible this just does not work for me at all it's not I, I'm basically I'm going to redo this entire thing because it's not turning out how I wanted it to be however I wanted to show you what my thinking was behind this so first I wanted to create a tree house the, the, this is what I came up with but it's just it doesn't look great it's it, it works you know they do come up here although they don't go inside which is annoying I'm not sure why sometimes they seem to be able to and then sometimes they don't um, I wanted to do some kind of rope bridges connecting the tree houses with the trees and that doesn't look good I don't like actually having just one big island it feels like the koalas are just too far away from you obviously I could get away with that I could I shrink the water but then it's not really an island so uh, I don't like this wall this has got to change so yeah anyway the koalas are in so they're happy but I'm going to completely redo this enclosure now because it's just not how I, I wanted it at all but uh, you know I, I like to show you my failures as well as my successes because um, believe me it doesn't matter how good you are at any of these games you never get it right first time um, and anyone that you watch on YouTube playing this game they do not get it right first time every time sometimes you do sometimes you create something and it just turns out exactly how you want and it's fantastic uh, but more often than not you end up making a lot of changes along the way and I just thought I would show you um, a bit of my process because quite frankly what you're looking at now is complete and utter turd so um, yeah it's uh, it's not working so I'm gonna I'm gonna go away and completely redesign this I do apologize for the ice cream van in the background he's trying to sell me some lovely ice cream and I'm very tempted thank you for stopping <laughs> sorry about that um, so yes yeah, so I am now going to go away and do some work and uh, I'll be back once I've improved things and here we are this is going much better now so as you can see I've completely redesigned this enclosure um, still need to work on the wall that's uh, that's a, a work in progress so what I came up with I had decided to keep a bit of an island at the back here but then to get the koalas a bit closer I decided to have two smaller islands here I mean look at these little bears they are just wonderful little creatures aren't they anyway yes yeah, so this island is now connected with these little rope bridges so they can climb up here they can walk along the rope as you can see they can sit on the rope as well uh, supported by these two large beams and then they can come off to the side and they can sit up on these platforms here as well um, and koalas can swim so they can get down here and walk around at the bottom as you can see I'll put some enrichment items on each of the islands here as well uh, and a little bit of foliage um, so these are all um, Oceana plants um, wanted to keep it um, a little bit colorful because it can be a bit bland otherwise all this Australian stuff there's lots of lots of sand involved so I wanted to get a bit of color uh, and then at the uh, at the back here um, I've done this sort of fake rock work along here because there's going to be a building back here at the moment there's not it's just to keep it up but I'm going to be putting a big building in behind here so I've got this fake rock work the door here with the shelter over the top very simple I, I like these shelters these big pieces these are they're huge but they work at a distance you know if you look at that it just it looks about right I think for that for that gate so I'm really happy with that I love this piece as well that I've put on the wall here this koala it looks like it's sort of carved into the stone really really nice piece I really really like that um, and then yeah just some simple foliage around here just a you know combination of different things uh, still still a lot to do uh, oh yeah one of these enrichment trees here that they can climb as well still need to put a few more rocks I think along here um, so yeah lots more detailing to do but you can see the the, the structure that I've gone for now uh, and I think you'll agree this looks a lot better now than the last version of this enclosure obviously it means they've got a bit less land but they've got plenty I mean I've turned all that stuff off anyway for the sake of this do I'm not you know there's there's no um there's no requirements for the animals it, it's just uh you know I'm, I'm building this place to have fun 
Um, obviously, they're still getting fed, and they're, they're you know they're still going to have nice enclosures. But I'm not worrying too much about the uh, exactly what their needs are. So yeah, there we go. So that's where we are so far. So much improved. Still lots to do, but I think it's coming along really nicely. I'm very happy with the basic structure of it now. Um, hopefully, you like how it's coming along. So let me go away now and do some more. Right, so not too much done here. I've put the path in, so you can see I've linked the path around the edge here. I had to do a bit of re-landscaping because the uh, the path couldn't get close enough to the um, the fence here, but uh, that was all sorted out okay. Um, and I'll put the fake building in at the back. Well, it's not a fake building, but it's it's a building. Um, obviously, it's just got the keeper hut in there. Um, but I've gone with this nice wooden, uh, Australian wooden roof, and then this, um, you know, plain sort of lime, uh, is that limestone? No, it's concrete, isn't it? A white concrete wall. Because you're not really going to see any of that. That's for that's for me, and that's for you, and that's for the staff to see. The, the public aren't going to see any of that. So it doesn't need to be super detailed. Obviously, I will be doing more. I will be putting some windows and doors and things on it as well. Um, but for now, that's, I just wanted to get the basic structure working. Uh, an animal has escaped, has it? I don't think it has. Look, there's one there, one there, one there, one there. No, they haven't escaped. You're lying. Um, anyway, so there we go. So, oh yes, and I, I did just detail with some rocks. So a couple more of the larger rocks against the wall back here. And then the smaller ones uh, sunk down into the ground around here as well. Um, you know, just, just detailing these, these areas and, and out on these islands as well. Again, just a few of these rocks here. Just little details like that really add to the texture of the whole thing. Um, so yeah, there we go. So what I need to do uh, still, I still need to work on this wall because I, I don't want the uh, the brick wall here at all. Um, and uh, once uh, once this is done, this habitat, that's going to be the end of this video. And then I've got obviously all of this area here to do, which is all backstage. This will be the next video. Um, but for now, it's, I'm just going to focus on this habitat. So I think um, one more segment, and uh, if I go away now, I should be able to get it finished. Right, I have now got the habitat finished, and I'm really happy with how it's coming along. So let me show you what I've done. Um, firstly, you can see I have redone the edge. So the brick wall is gone, and I made the wall glass so that it's non-climbable. Uh, and luckily the koalas can't climb rocks either so um, what I've done is create an entire barrier around the edge here using rocks all the way around there uh, you can see I've put a small media area at the front here again just using uh, a rock on its side um, so you've got a small screen big screen you've got a micro uh, not a microphone a speaker here pumping out some information about koalas you've got a uh, an education board here and this is one of my own custom small ones. So this is one of the small education boards that you use for the exhibits. Unfortunately, you can't use them for these larger things, which is very annoying. And then I've just sunk some um, some lettering pieces in there to make it look like it's got some writing on it. Um, and I think that's uh, you know simple and effective, and that will educate people nicely. And it doesn't block block the view either. I didn't want I didn't want these all over here because I didn't want too much of the, the view covered. Certainly when you come in here, I didn't want anything around here. I want you to be able to just look straight forward and see the animals, see the water. I didn't want any, anything here, even low down, kind of blocking it too much. Um, and I think that looks really nice. Very happy with how that wall has all come along. As you can see, I had a corner over here that I wasn't too sure what to do with. So I put a waterfall in. I thought that made sense, seeing as you've got a large body of water in here. Um, so a really simple waterfall, just one of the large waterfall pieces with all these rocks sunk in. Uh, obviously rocks just around it, I haven't detailed the back yet. Um, and some water plants as well, some reeds and some of these lovely lilies just floating around. And there's a few more of the lilies over here as well and at the front here. And then the last thing I did, um, I realised that I hadn't given the koalas any sort of indoor area. Um, so I had to be a bit clever here and as you can see at the back here I've created a small cave. So I did this just by moving some of the rocks on this wall here uh, and then obviously because I built the building here so you've already got the walls and the ceiling so all I had to do is create a, uh, uh, sorry, a fake wall here with the rocks, put some bedding down, got a little um, enrichment item here 
Uh, I've got a light up here for at night. And I also put one of these web cameras in. Now these things are weird. And I know I think a lot of people have been commenting on these. The whole point of these things is certainly in a zoo would be to be able to link this to a TV screen which you could then have out here somewhere on a little board and people could then watch what the koalas are doing in the bed area uh, without the koalas knowing but you can't at least I don't think you can at the moment the only way you can use this is by um, enter camera view on here and then if the camera if the koalas are in there you can then watch them but then I, c I can do that anyway because I can float around all over the place but the public can't so yeah not really sure what the point of that is until you can link it to a monitor somewhere very very odd um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's something they'll implement because otherwise those are basically pointless so there we go but I really like this actually how that worked out We're having a little cave back there and the koalas do go in there I have seen them use it um, so there we go that is our first uh, habitat in this area like I say lots of backstage stuff to do still over here but um, for now that's that's going to be it for this video I am very happy in the end with how this turned out it did take me like you saw it took me a couple of attempts to get the layout correct and then it was just about detailing um, but actually uh, I'm, I, I think it's turned out well I think it's better than I imagined it was going to be I'm very happy that I came up with the idea of having these two smaller islands at the front because now you can really feel like you're quite close to the animals whereas before the closest they got was sort of right back here in the water area here uh, so you're quite a distance but now you could almost you know feel like you can uh, reach out and stroke them an animal has escaped I bet you it hasn't no it hasn't because there's all four of my koalas are sitting right there don't know why it keeps thinking they've escaped that is very odd Never mind. I know they haven't because I can see them all. Hmm. And the tra traversable area is pretty decent as well. So let me just. Oh yeah, there we go. See, so they can they can climb these trees as well. So they could come right up into these trees here if they want, and up here as well. And you've got obviously the post. You've got this tree at the back here as well. And this is their their um, uh, their enrichment item on this tree here. And as you can see there, they can go inside the cave. Uh, but they can't escape which is good so they can I mean this bit here it shows that they can get up on the rock but they can't then escape uh, and they can't get out anywhere which is good and again over here they can just about get up onto this rock oh in fact look at that they could actually get right up on this rock here but they can't get down the other side that's interesting so they could almost come up here and get touched by uh, by the people but I don't suppose they ever will um, but yeah so that's great I am very happy with how that has turned out um, so let me zoom out and show you so the other animals that we're going to have in here are the dole and the kangaroo and in fact i may well put the is it a cassowary i never know how you pr pronounce that i really should look into it but anyway the uh, the big bird uh it might come in here as well and and my thinking with this is um i'm actually maybe going to create sort of one large enclosure with all three animals in it is my thinking um potentially with a an indoor area here an outdoor area here and I, I, I want to have a pathway here because I want all, all these areas to be linked in different ways not just one central pathway here and then you branch off I want uh, extra pathways sort of coming through here and then linking into the next area so I want there to be a pathway leading from here coming through here uh, and I want that to be some sort of a bridge uh, and I want the enclosure to be linked each side of the bridge somehow that's um, that's roughly what I've got in mind and then this end I'm going to create a small or a, well, actually maybe quite a large picnic area I think um, yeah that's yeah that's kind of my idea some sort of picnic area potentially with a viewing area that looks into the indoor bit of the enclosure I'm not entirely sure but that's sort of my plan but first I need to detail this area here so that's going to be my next video so for now that is going to be it for this first episode so I do hope you're uh, enthusiastic about this new zoo and the the whole idea of the theming uh, let me know if you've got any thoughts or opinions on it please and uh, I really look forward to, to continuing this and, uh, and getting, getting on with all the different, uh, different new animals that I haven't done before. Uh, so thank you very much for watching today and for joining me on the channel. 
Uh, I really do appreciate uh, your time and your effort for continuing to support me on the channel here uh, and continuing just to enjoy these games with me because uh, I'm having so much fun playing all the different games, not just Planet Zoo but all my other games as well. Um, Planet Zoo is certainly the most popular on the channel and uh, it's, it's certainly my favourite game out of, out of all the ones that I play at the moment just because it is so creative. Uh, and I do love the animals. So let me leave you with a lovely little shot of our koala bears. So thank you. And uh, hopefully I will see you again very soon in the next episode. Until then, take care and bye for now.